All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon are both down below for anybody who wants to support me, only do so if you actually can. But the uh, September, start of September drought update, you can see now from the uh, drought conditions map that there have been some changes over the uh, last several weeks, namely that uh, drought relief is ebbing its way into existence. As you can see from the gradually less dark colors over Arizona and New Mexico. As you can see from uh, some Doppler radar screenshots uh, that I took over the last several weeks or so. And it has produced a visible effect in the Arizona reservoir levels for the uh, Phoenix area reservoirs. As that's basically where almost all of Arizona's population lives. Phoenix is supplied by a number of surrounding reservoirs. And where they otherwise uh, would have been at around 90% full, they had declined down to a collective average of only 65%. However, over the last number of weeks uh, during most of August, Arizona has been receiving a decent amount of rain and thunderstorms. And those have refilled the Phoenix area reservoirs from 65 back up to 71% full now. Granted, at this time last year, uh, they were all the way up at 85% full but they have at least regained 6% uh, of their capacity so far. In New Mexico, it uh, isn't as noticeable in the river levels, as most of New Mexico's water uh, comes from the Rio Grande River as it flows through New Mexico, coming down from the Rockies uh, from its origin in Colorado. New Mexico has been receiving uh, thunderstorms and rain just like Arizona has. However, when that water falls into the river in that particular location, the river's kind of, you know, moving. So the water falls into the river, but then flows away. What would actually raise the consistent uh, baseline level, what would raise those uh, would be more rainfall and or snow melt in Colorado where the rivers originate from and for the river flow rates. Uh, unfortunately the Rio Grande River as of the moment being a bit under a hundred cubic feet per second in the Albuquerque area versus on historical average it uh, would otherwise normally be at about 500 and the smaller tributary of the Rio Grande, the Pecos River, normally it would be at this time of year around an average of 75 and as of the moment it's a little bit under that it's 65 cubic feet per second. Up in Utah, uh, there have been some off and on episodes of thunderstorms and rain. It has been enough of a difference to uh, sort of stall some declines out. In uh, Utah, most of the population lives in or around the Salt Lake City area. And the Salt Lake City area gets its water from a number of surrounding creeks and rivers coming down from the mountains, flowing down out of several reservoirs up in those mountains. Uh, one of those being the Pine View Reservoir, and the U.S. Uh, Lakes and Reservoir System is measured by elevation feet, not the actual like depth of the lake or how high the uh, water level currently is above sea level. So with the Pine View Reservoir, uh, if it were full, it would be at about 4,900 elevation feet, and it is not very deep. Uh, it empties out. It empties out at 4,818, and it's down by over 40 feet. It had gotten all the way down to about 4,858.5 or so. However, because of the recent rain and thunderstorms, the Pine View Reservoir's decline has stalled, and it is still holding at uh, 4,858.5 or so. The Deer Creek Reservoir, another one in that area, its full level would be at 5,418 elevation feet. Its bottom point uh, would be down in the mid-5200s, I believe, and it had lost uh, close to 30 feet and was down under 5,391. However, uh, the recent thunderstorms and rainfall had reversed that a little bit and it made it back up uh, to 5,393. However, over the last several days it's been declining again and is now back down to 5,392.5. And the one measurement exception, the Jordanelle Lake or Jordanelle Reservoir uh, gets measured in percentage. And uh, when I first started tracking Jordanelle's numbers a couple of months back, it was up around 72 or 73 percent full. And it was declining pretty quickly uh, over the course of each update and uh, got down towards 60. However, with the recent thunderstorms and rain, it has slowed down a lot in its decline and is presently uh, under 58 
at 57.6% full. Now over to uh, everything supplying California's enormous water demand, starting with the, uh, the two reservoirs outside of California that contribute to its supply. Uh, usually the, uh, the most famous reservoirs, at least until Lake Orville uh, stole the spotlight more recently in the news. Uh, Southern California in particular gets a lot of its water from the Colorado River Aqueduct, which uh, pumps water hundreds of miles from the Colorado River, a smaller reservoir on the border of California and Arizona. And whenever, like in uh, present times, in conditions of extreme drought, whenever the Colorado River level or flow rate would otherwise be would otherwise uh, be a bit too low for the Colorado River Aqueduct system to use, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, further up the river, start releasing uh, extra water from their reservoirs to flow down river to that border reservoir to uh, make sure that it stays nice and full or almost full so that the uh, the aqueduct system can use it to pump all that water over to California. And those two are not doing that great. Lake Powell, the uh, one further up, the one furthest up the river, uh, normally would be at about 3,700 feet or elevation feet of water level if it was full uh, back in the times when it could be full. And its lowest point is technically a bit under 3,200. However, uh, there's something you have to consider that uh, that whole depth measurement is deceiving. Remember, it's not a perfectly uh, vertical walled rectangular formation like a swimming pool. Lakes and reservoirs are natural uh, divots and depressions and canyons in the land that have been flooded uh, by damming the river. So lakes and reservoirs get narrower and narrower the further down you go. And also in particular with a lot of these lakes and reservoirs out in the west, they have sort of a, a main section, a main channel, then with a, a bunch of uh, offshooting portions from it, uh, like you can see in various satellite photos. And the case is often that uh, those offshoots are much less deep than the, uh, the narrow main canyon channel. So Lake Powell is all the way down. So Lake Powell is down now to uh, just about 3,549 elevation feet. Uh, that would make you think, okay, it's it's down 30% or so, so it should be 70% full. Wrong. It's uh, all the way down to 32% uh, full. Similarly with Lake Mead, uh, Lake Mead has been losing uh, water level perpetually over time over the last uh, two and a half decades or so. And lakes and reservoirs and rivers uh, have different uh, fluctuating seasons throughout the year, depending on like which season gets more rainfall or when the most snow melt is occurring. And so with reservoirs in particular, uh, you'll see over the year that their water levels will fluctuate, they'll rise and fall with their, uh, their given seasons. However, Lake Mead, uh, similar to Lake Powell, has been uh, consistently losing more each year than it regains during its refill or recharge season. And if Lake Mead were full, it would be up at uh, 1,225 elevation feet or so. However, it is now down to 1,068. And this is during the uh, time of year when it would normally flatten out or level out. And it has done so for the most part and is presently staying at about uh, 1,068. However, although Lake Mead is uh, still much deeper than it's uh, dropped down to so far, the amount of water level it's lost at this point uh, has it all the way down to only 35% of its actual water volume capacity. Now over in California itself, starting up near the top of the state, uh, the largest reservoir in California, Lake Shasta. Lake Shasta has almost lost 80 feet of water level this year alone with its full level or would-be full level uh, being about 1,067 elevation feet and its deepest point, aka right behind the dam, uh, being down closer around 600 or so. Once its uh, disappointing refill season was over, it was at about 980 and has fallen all the way down almost to 900, presently around 904 elevation feet of water level. However, it is uh, misleading again that actually has it all the way down now under 30 at only 27% full. So Lake Shasta is heading for interesting territory. Folsom Lake feeds the American River, uh, which is also used by the Sacramento area. However, it looks like Folsom Lake uh, is withholding a bit of water and not letting as much flow out as they otherwise would. 
just as Milliton Lake or Milliton Reservoir seems to be doing as well. And almost all of these uh, California reservoirs uh, feed into the, uh, the various aqueduct and pipeline systems that move the water throughout the state. So they might be choosing to uh, rely on some while uh, trying to hold back some others. Balsam Lake has stopped around 375 elevation feet. Uh, full level would be at 466. Its lowest point right behind the dam is uh, in the lower 200s or so, and its present water level uh, has it at only 24% full. Milliton Lake uh, stopped around 503 and has actually built back up uh, just a little bit, up to about 505 or 506, and that translates to 45% full, so it's under half. While San Luis Reservoir has uh, been dropped by over 100 feet of water level over the course of this year so far, uh, down from about 470 to now around 365, with its would-be full level uh, being up at around 544, and its empty point uh, being down in the 200s, and its present water level of 365, translating to only 14% full. Lake Orville, the uh, mega-famous one most recently, as it uh, passed below the point where it had to shut the hydroelectric dam down. Lake Orville at full uh, would be at about 900 elevation feet, its lowest point is uh, down around like 300 right behind the dam, and the level where it can no longer generate electric power is 640, which it passed below uh, several weeks back and is now down to around 630 elevation feet, which would at a glance seem like that should translate to just uh, a bit above 50% full or so. However, uh, it's actually down at 23% uh, full. The Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, uh, the primary supplier of water for the San Francisco area, if full would be at 3,806 elevation feet, uh, its deepest, its absolute deepest point is about 3,500 right behind the dam. And Hetch Hetchy, in terms of its, uh, its yearly seasonal cycles, usually does pretty good. It usually declines down towards around like 3,750 or 40, and then recovers back, and then recovers back up to full. However, last year, it dropped all the way down almost to a uh, 3,700 flat and only recovered back into the 3,780s and now has been on this year's downward slope and is down into the uh, 3,750s, around 3,755 or so. New Bullard's Bar Reservoir has declined in the drought this year uh, from 1,860 down to 1,810 elevation feet of water level. Uh, with its would-be full level up at uh, 1,960, and not its deepest point, but the general in-frame area of uh, when it would essentially uh, basically be done with would be if it gets down between 1,750 and 1,700. New Malone's uh, has uh, dropped by over 80 feet this year, dropping from 1,010 down to now only 925 elevation feet of water level, with its uh, would-be full level being at 1,086, and its, and its absolute lowest point right behind the dam being 586, translating out to uh, sub-40, down to only 38% full. The Don Pedro Reservoir has declined uh, this year from 775 down to 735 elevation feet, uh, with its full level being 804, and its deepest point right behind the dam being 404. Again, its present water level uh, translating to a greater water volume loss than an initial first glance of math would make you think. As roughly rounded, uh, initial first glance would make it look like uh, it's dropped down to 80% full. However, it's actually all the way down to only about half at 53% full. And the final two, uh, another pair of rivers up in the northwest. In Oregon, the Williamette River has consistently over the last several months uh, been between usually 20 and 25% below its normal level, its normal flow rate, and is still sticking in that area for the moment. Meanwhile, the enormous Columbia River uh, forming most of the border between Washington and Oregon. The Columbia River has been dropping uh, from further up towards around like 25,000 cubic feet per second, more recently down to about 15 or so, and even more recently, the last few days, has even dropped down towards more like 12,000 cubic feet per second versus its would-be levels uh, back when it was up towards like 25 it would have otherwise normally been uh, up at around 35 instead. And as of the present moment, uh, normally it would be uh, lower, 
but it would still be up between 15 and 20. However, as of the moment, uh, it's dropped down towards about 12. And that's it for this one, at least. So thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said at the beginning, I have uh, other episodes and videos about all kinds of other stuff too. PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. May our Father in Heaven bless, protect, and save all of you, and grant rain to those who need it most. And I will see you all around next time.